You may have noticed that we do movie reviews. And that's pretty much all we've been doing regularly for the last year. Um, and I say we loosely because that, that isn't me. It's not him either. <laughs> no. Uh, it's a guy that you guys haven't actually had a chance to meet yet. Um, he's who's, here. That, who's that guy? He's, he's this guy. Which guy? His oh! Guy. It's Brandon. S Stephen Amell. No. no. Oh, he, okay. We haven't introduced the guest star yet. This is, this is Brandon. Face, face, what? face to name, movie guy, the guy that you. I don't think him. he's knows what he's talking about. I don't. No. <laughs> anyway, oh, we have Stephen Mel is joining us today, but that that that's for different reasons. Yeah. We're here to talk about stuff. Um, no, we're not here to talk about stuff. That's that's the nerd. Um, we're here to talk about movies. Visual narratives. Yeah. Specifically speaking. As you may see in the uh, title, this is called the visual narrative. Are imperative. you going to make me add an upper third? No, on title. It's always above the video. Oh, fair enough. Yes, yeah, true. Is it? On it's YouTube, below the yeah. Team. yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah. There's a if visual narrative imperative, Forgive people. me. If you're watching in portrait mode on your phone, then it's down here, because they always put it under the video. But why would you watch it in portrait mode? Then you can't see my pimples or something. <laughs> so, we're, we're going to talk about movies, which this is his spearheaded idea. I am not good at being serious. So Damn right. we're gonna try that. We're gonna try some new stuff. Um, I don't know. So yeah, Talk exactly. Uh, today's podcast title is gonna be called "Thespian Nerdgasm." I know it's a, I know it's a little dirty, but that's the way we like it. Keep it, keep he's, it nice and fresh, he's nice so and innocent. beautiful. He's so innocent. Yeah, a little <laughs> innocent, but thespian nerdgasm. So naturally, we're gonna be talking about our favorite actors. In this case, we're gonna be talking about our favorite longtime actor, our favorite current actor. And then something upcoming. So, female Whoa. actor, actresses, with the X -wing. female <coughs> actresses, and then we'll go to that list as well. So, if you want to start, mm -hmm. John, do you want to talk about someone you, you've been looking forward to? Uh, yeah, my favorite all-time actor has got to be Harrison Ford. Uh, he is the quintessential leading guy, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, what what movie do you even list as his resume? I mean, you've got he's Han Solo. He's Indiana Jones. He's the fucking president. <laughs> you know? Yes. Uh, that's actually one of my favorite, um, I almost called it a Han Solo movie, Harrison <laughs> Ford movie, is Air Force One. I just, I adore that movie. Unironically. Get off my plane. <laughs> to be honest, I don't think I've seen that one. What? Can you extrapolate more oh, information yeah. on this? Oh, uh, yeah. Wow. Uh, terrorists hijack Air Force Yum. One, and Harrison Ford is the president. And okay. he has to commando it through that airplane and kick the terrorists off of his plane. Spoiler alert for a 20-year-old movie. At the end, he puts a... Uh, is fighting the terrorist in the cargo bay. Mm -hmm. Puts a... Uh, th they're wearing parachutes. Okay. Wraps a cord of some sort around the guy's neck. Pulls... The, says... Get off my plane. Pulls the shoe. Oh, I, I, and then I've seen that. I see, I've yeah. seen that. I've never seen the movie. It's my though. favorite line from a Harrison Ford movie, which I mean, I know. You know. I, uh, yeah. I know is I, that's easily mine. Yeah, Empire Strikes Back. Why and that was actually Han Solo's line. Harrison Ford. Yep. Luckily, George Lucas didn't have his hands on too much of the project. The, George obviously, Lucas. George Lucas is good at some things. Mm -hmm. Obviously, he's good at some things. Yeah, his first tries. Script writing is he's not great. one of them. Yes. He's great at first tries. Then uh, he tries to fix George the Lucas is best when he has really strong opposition. So, Harrison Ford, obviously yours. Mm -hmm. Who's yours? That. I don't know if you motherfuckers are going to believe it. <laughs> but Samuel Jeffs. All time. Pulp Fiction. The Negotiator. Mm -hmm. Tons of epic supporting roles. Yeah, I was going to say, I think of him as more of a supporting actor, but I mean, th not that that's not really important. It is. He does lead well. Um, I think he leads in, in, in conjunction well, better. I don't know. Yeah, uh, Pulp Fiction. Playing off of people. You know, Pulp Fiction, the two, him and Travolta. Travolta. Uh, the Negotiator, him and Spacey. They were, they, he, he, when he has a sounding board, yes. But he does well on his own, too. And I'd love to give you an example, but right now my brain stopped working. <laughs> well, obviously, you could talk about Star Wars. Did you enjoy him? In he the was prequels? not a lead in Star Wars. He was Mace well. Windu. We're talking about like he's Mace Windu. Mace and Windu. He was the special, you know, badass motherfucker that etched on his lightsaber that happened to be purple in the whole universe or whatever. Mm -hmm. But he wasn't a lead. 
well, he was supporting. I feel like the and he he wasn't given room in that role. Like if he could have been the real badass in that role, oh, yeah. dude, he could yeah. have been amazing. Which they kind of but went when you further just into that in like the animated, like the yes. not 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 the Clone Wars television show, which was yeah, it was all right. <laughs> but the first movie that came out, which was for multiple artists, it looked kind of similar to like an anime almost type style, mm -hmm. where they showed Mace Windu fighting and showed actually. He is a badass. He, was he could like shaft. fight against possibly someone like Superman or Neo. Uh, shaft. The yeah. uh, the Star Wars book about Mace Windu is actually quite good too. Um, I can't quite remember the title of it, but I know it's written by Matt Stover, and in it he is a complete, complete badass. He yeah, all is the extended universe. Expanded. Yeah. yeah. Now but, called Legends, but Legends. Yeah. Uh, it still what hurts. kind of so solidified him there is just. It was the negotiator. He, he, his portrayal of said character and a lot of his like speech modes that he does, you can kind of you can feel for him. Well, you know, it, it's real. It, mm -hmm. it feels real. It doesn't. It's not. He's just really good at reading words. He becomes the character that he portrays. He always does that. He, yeah, he is really unless good. you know it's like snakes on a plane. But th the fact is, he wants. He has a goal to be in more movies than anyone ever, which means he says yes to everything. <laughs> What's in your wall? Yeah, the, th and the thing is, he might be one of the most charismatic guys ever to work in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. And he has a distinct persona that audiences love. If they didn't love him, he wouldn't be thrown into a billion projects. Um, he doesn't necessarily have that leading man vibe because it is just such a distinct persona, which you could say with people like Sam Rockwell, although Sam Rockwell has shown that he can carry a film. Mm -hmm. But Samuel Jackson pretty much is the epitome of someone who has just a punch of charisma, something similar to sort of what the, what the Rock is now, though I don't like The Rock, plenty of people do, mm -hmm. where he can lead in this small little role and kill it, but you don't want to see him every second necessarily on screen, because it could be too much. But, I don't know, I'll take more Samuel L. Jackson just about any day. Yeah, right, I will. Yeah. <laughs> Nick Fury, well, it's, what's funny was with Nick Fury, um, you probably read the... Um, the Ultimate Comics, the first issue of The Ultimates, mm -hmm. um, they actually talk about in the Avengers, oh, they're, they're making a new film for the Avengers. They joke about this, and this was 10 years before the first Avengers even came out with Mark Millar comic. And like, so who, who would they want to cast as you? And then Nick Fury's talking, and he said, well, that's obvious, Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, sure enough, yep. he's the perfect cast for the role. Yep. Uh, well, I think they actually, didn't they write his, when they relaunched him, didn't they kind of write him as a Sam Jackson Yeah, character? that's what yeah. I heard that uh, Mark Millar kind of had him in mind. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, Mark Millar is awesome. If you had a chance to read some of his stuff, Kick-Ass, uh, Civil War, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Wanted. My favorite actor of all time, uh, someone who's touched me personally what? for a Whoa. long time. Whoa! We touched me <laughs> personally. Yeah, it's, Show me uh, on the it's a very intimate you. relationship we've shared. <laughs> Show uh, me maybe a little bit too <laughs> intimate. Show me on Steven where he touched you. <laughs> Somewhere like th th this area. In the boobs or balls region. Yeah. We got it on, and since then, we've been really just... We, we can't get our hands off of each other. And that person is Tom Hanks. Oh, yeah. Tom Hanks. I love, love Tom Hanks. Um, he has the greatest amount of archive movies that I love. Um, part of this definitely comes from. <laughs> part of this definitely comes from my parents started collecting Tom Hanks uh, when I was very young, so I got to see a lot of his younger movies. And then part of it was Forrest Gump had such a huge impact on. Ah, best Jedi, Jedi. <sighs> so obviously another one of my favorite films. I have it already laid out here. Is Castaway. We have all of our other favorite actors listed here. So we got Harrison Ford here and Samuel L. Jackson. Uh, one of the best deaths ever from Samuel L. Jackson in the film. At least we see the post-traumatic stuff of what happens. Ridiculous. But yeah, Castaway. Love this movie. I think Tom Hanks gives one of the best performances, not only of his life, but one of the best performances I've ever seen in film. It was sad that he didn't even win that year. Russell Crowe took it from him with Gladiator, which mm -hmm. was disgusting. <laughs> so disgusting. Well, Russell Crowe was great in Gladiator, but Tom Hanks, come on, it's gosh. such movie. a brilliant film and uh, movie. And some of my other favorites: uh, Joe versus the Volcano, uh, Say Anything, 
uh, Save it Pri- Saving Private Ryan. Mm-hmm. Uh, such a great movie. That's um, that's probably my favorite Tom Hanks movie, too. Oh, Big. Oh, my God, yeah. Big, yeah. yeah. Um, that's probably one of my favorite Tom Hanks movies, too, and it actually kind of ties into my favorite current leading guy, which would be uh, Matt Damon, also from the same movie. Um, Matt hard not to, it's hard not to like Matt Damon, even though he's kind of a Doobie. jerky perf- Jerky uh, outside uh, mm-hmm. movies, but he's so freaking charismatic. He and is the stereotypical Hollywood lead. And he's able to do a really good job explaining the way his character is feeling without having to actually say anything. Like, there's shots in The Martian, which is probably my favorite movie this year. Uh, there's shots in The Martian where he's describing what took an entire book, uh, an entire chapter of the book to describe, is just like a two second shot close up. He's he does a really good job, you know, just acting with his facial expressions, and he can also do the action like in Born. That's called acting. <clears throat> well, yeah, but I mean, not all, yeah. not all leading guys can necessarily act do that. Yeah, well, well part it, of it I think is because he has his hand in knowing how to write a script, mm-hmm. so he kind of knows That's character really intention point. really well, mm-hmm. uh, especially with Good Will Hunting, fantastic yeah. film. But what were you continuing well, on with it, that? It's, there's, there's a lot of actors that can act really well with their voice, but can't necessarily get the same level of emotion across without saying stuff. This and he, he does a really good job of being able to a lot get of it's stuff in the across. Eyes, yeah, huh? yeah like, with the eyes. S- small throwback to Tom Hanks. He does that really well, man. He really does. I oh my God, really yeah. was happy for him when he peed in the Green Mile. I... <laughs> I mean, that was the most relief I'd ever seen on anyone ever. I was very happy for him. I was emotionally I there with him. It was very convincing. Mm-hmm. Acting. Yeah. He's very good at peeing. <laughs> <laughs> he, just, he just is. Have you seen uh, the baseball movie with uh, Gina Davis? There's peeing. no crying in baseball. No crying in baseball. It's a league of their own. But league of their own, yes. yes. <laughs> this is a big movie. He, he might be the best peer we've ever seen on screen. It's hard to come up with a competitor for that. Yeah, that's true. Master like, there's not even a competition. Oscar award winner for peeing. <laughs> just, just please, Academy, let's have our separate category. You know you want to do it. <laughs> Convin- the yeah, most we might as well just include peeing. bowel movement into that as well. Yes. Well, if you think well, there's about Oscar winning movies, how many, how many There's a lot more options for yeah. that. But how many yeah. poopers do you see that are actually Oscar winning performances? <laughs> true. <laughs> true. I mean... There's That's only so point. much grunting, sweating, or depending on what you've eaten, screaming and howling. That would be all that good in a classy movie. I was going to say The Hulk. Oh, Is there yes. pooping in The Hulk? No, but he definitely does all of those all attributes of those things, you listed. Yeah. The, award for, the award for best pooping goes to Eric Bana. For some reason, I went oh, with the first wow. thought. Well, uh, he's, he said... Uh, uh, no. Uh, uh, um, um, any other films that you really love of Matt Damon? Well, I mean, the whole Bourne trilogy. This is supposed to be a classy three. podcast, and we're talking about pooping. Yes. I'm sorry, we were moving on, but I had to say that. Go ahead. Uh, the Bourne movies. I mean, that logically, I would have expected that to be his peak. You know, like, that would be mm. the last real movie you'd see him in, because that is really high up there. That was a big trilogy. That's when everyone wanted to hold one. Mm-hmm. And most people can't make it past that action star has a trilogy stage. Yes, A lot of people... True hit that movie, and that's finito. That's all of their career. Um, but he managed to come back from that after took him a almost little while. 10 years. It took him a little while. Yeah. yeah, but he's slowly making his way mm-hmm. back. Um, that, so, Andrew, who was your, who was your yeah. favorite current actor? Current? Current. Um, he wasn't here uh, until I actually watched where he was when he was an up-and-comer. Um, but I actually have to say I respect Chris Pratt a lot. Uh, yeah, no, I just, he has kind of a, uh, I don't want to say he's going to be typecast into this character, but he has a way of, of presenting himself in a movie where it's serious enough, but humorous enough that we haven't seen since young Harrison Ford uh, yep. or others of that nature. We haven't had someone like that in a while. There've been people that tried, but Nathan Fillion could have been that. Yes. Yeah. Well, he kind of dove himself off a cliff. Um, with the whole acting thing. Like, he's funny, but I don't think he can do serious anymore. Not really. Um, but, like, with the with Chris in, say, Jurassic World, he can pull off the scary danger run from dinosaurs without, you know, being too fearless of the situation. But
but still be the crazy action hero while still making funny jokes. He can manage to make a movie better. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't think Jurassic World would have been better with a different lead. Yeah. I think it would have been markedly worse because he's able to take really terrible lines and sell them. Mm-hmm. You know, some, and, of, some of the lines that his character got in that movie. And of movie, course, our first, the best experience, movie ever. our first ex- uh, mass experience with him as in a big classic, now classic, movie was Goofy Star-Lord, you know, which wasn't too far off from Andy Dwyer. <laughs> he's just had, he was markedly he's, smarter, but... And he's just lovable. Yeah. Like, it's hard not to love a guy that was, what, 240 pounds, overweight, super stupid guy. And he stopped drinking beer? Ridiculous. One of the funniest guys ever. A lot mm-hmm. of improvised lines because he just is a genius at comedic timing. And then he loses the weight, becomes ridiculously attractive. I looked up your symptoms. It looks like you have network connectivity issues. That's, <laughs> no, that's such improvised. a good line. Such a good line. Uh, yes. Uh, well, and, you know, the comparison you made to Harrison Ford is absolutely true. Now, he could play any, like if they're remaking early Harrison Fords, he could pull up off all of those roles but flawlessly. do I think he should? Oh, I don't think he should. I don't think he should. I don't think he should. No. Um, there are rumors that say James he's going James McAvoy to... should do all Patrick Stewart stuff, but... <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. I think, yeah, that's a, that was a good pairing, but yeah, if we're thinking young Han Solo or young Indiana Jones, well, we've seen those people. Maybe not so much that's on Indy, but Han Solo started out as young Han Solo. You can't crisper at him. So, if we're talking about that, we should, should naturally progress into, like, who should they cast as the young Harrison Ford and the new Star Wars? I don't know. Someone who has a track record of already playing him well? Uh, I don't have an example for this. The guy who brought it up has an example for this. Okay, so, obviously, if you guys don't know who Anthony and Gruber is, look him up. That's Anthony and Gruber. Uh, he was in Age of Adeline. He not only looks ridiculously yeah. like... Harrison Ford. To a T. He mm-hmm. looks like him. But he can pull off his facial expressions and his voice. Mm-hmm. It's scary how much this guy appears like Harrison Ford. Uh, it's, and he, he's a younger version of him, so th- which is which they could go for. Have someone who's almost just an impersonator but can actually act as well as well. Yeah. As, yeah, well, as, as well as well. As well as well as well. And there's a, there's, I mean, there's a couple other ones that'd be good. Joseph Gordon-Levitt, just because he's so talented, yeah. and he has pulled off the young Bruce Willis. He could Obviously, they'd have things. to do prosthetics and things to make him more appear. I prefer to go to the Anthony and Gruber route, because I want to it appear as much as canon as possible. Um, while Chris Pratt is fun, and he has a certain per- persona, I don't think he'd be good at all. I wouldn't want Chris Pratt to play young Han Solo, but I think he could do a really good young indie like a full yes like, yes yeah because and also indiana jones is fantastic but it doesn't have the gravitas of star wars where you could get away with rebooting indiana jones i think yes without having riots in the street if you rebooted star wars there oh. would be fires <laughs> you know you know how they say essentially what the prequels term? were yes. yeah <laughs> the apocalypse would start then yeah but i mean i would love to see what in effect would be a period movie now of Indiana Jones rebooted. So do they think... It's a should... movie, but it's that time of movie. Well, because the Nazis are naturally his main enemy. Do they think they should be in the same time period? Do they think they should go I further like up maybe to maybe pull, like pull a red dawn? I think they should go to the same era, because even in Vietnam era, there wasn't that much of the Indiana Jones-style archaeology going on. Well, it was, the it was Nazis much were big on you know, ancient magics and shit. In real life, they were mm-hmm. looking for this stuff. So it, it, it makes sense. If you're going to reboot it, same Keep everything. Keep it the same, yeah. But... Mm-hmm. I don't think they should reboot it. I think if they're going to move on with Chris Pratt, then it would be something to the effect of instead of Shia LaBeouf being the son, it could be... Shia LaBeouf's talented, but he was not meant for that role no, at all. No. At all. So... Poor casting. Have Chris Pratt, because, I mean, age difference between the two actors, this is possible, you know, mm-hmm. so you can pull off that and make... We're just, we're not going to reboot Indiana Jones. We're going to reboot Indiana Jones and the Crystal Skull. We're just going to erase that movie and start you could. over. You could. Chris Pratt could make that movie. Mm-hmm. As long as they, you know, adjusted out a lot of the stupidity anyway. Because I don't think you could make it. There's a lot of stupidity in that movie. Aliens! I'm not sure they could actually do it. <sighs> so how about you? Well, we're, so if we're talking about oh. someone who can replace someone um, and stay in that role, James McAvoy. James McAvoy is my favorite current actor by far. He stole mine. 
It, yes, we were talking about this the other night. And I'm like, oh, who's that guy? Who's, oh, James McAvoy. Yeah, I love James McAvoy. If you've not seen Filth, it's only a decent film, but James McAvoy's performance in that is by far the best performance that I've seen in the last, like, 20 years. Hmm. Uh, We're so, so good. So, so good. He, in one scene, he pulls off 11 or 12 different emotions. I've counted them down. And he does it in a way that's not only convincing, but is heartbreaking, um, is funny, is sleazy. Um, really intense film. But that's not the only film I love of him. Becoming Jane was kind of where I first fell in love with James McAvoy. Um, I have had my man crush on him. Um, and then, I promise okay. we'll talk about ladies at some point. Yeah, we'll talk about... <laughs> we're we're going to lead into that eventually. But let's first, uh, you know, talk about these guys. And obviously, James McAvoy, Becoming Jane, Wanted. Um, that's where he started to become... Um, audiences started to recognize him. You probably saw him in Tumnus and Narnia, but he was such a small role that you didn't realize who he was. And he's starting to show audience how fun fun fact, he can be. Fun fact, Chris Pratt was in that Wanted movie. Is that the one? That's, that's what I was saying. Did you? Is yeah, I was saying Wanted with uh, Angelina Jolie, yeah. Oh, I don't remember Was that, that the one where he got hit across the face with a keyboard? Mm -hmm. or Okay. Yeah. One uh, of my favorite gifs of all time. <laughs> But then once, yeah, once he got his start into the X-Men, um, for audience, was like, wow, this guy is really cool. And mm -hmm. I don't want your role. future. Don't want your future. Although, I'll don't. be honest, I really thought Fassbender stood out more than... True, uh, true. Fassbender was great in that. Have you seen Frank? No. Um, he's in a bobblehead the entire time. <laughs> but that's him behind it, and... Any normal leading actor wouldn't have chose that because you don't get to see her face. And Fassbender is a very beautiful looking man. And he looks I'm like not actually sure if he likes dudes, but he's really no. laying it on okay. thick here. Okay, yeah, I am laying on very thick, but I ain't. I'm for the ladies. <laughs> well, and he, all, he, he totally looks like somebody that would grow Closet up. Closet cases would say it that way, too. I'm yeah. for the ladies. He looks like the kind of guy that would grow up come, to be Magneto. Come and look yeah, at my penis. <laughs> either either a closet case or a guy who's never been laid. <laughs> okay. Awkward so, silence. So if we're getting on to the next one. Uh, I am an asshole. Sorry, I'm always an asshole. Yeah. Well, He's back to fondling. I just... Are we, I mean, okay, so he just really likes the dangling balls that are fluffy. Not so that if we're talking about there's anything future, wrong with that. Talking about future rule for James McAvoy... I think uh, <laughs> casting him in Next Generation. Future role. <laughs> as Patrick Stewart. Either that or Tom Hardy. Those two are the main ones. Yeah. And. Yeah. And we obviously got to talk about the ladies at some point. So I don't just seem like a gigantic quasi hetero. Why does he keep doing that? <laughs> it got to be straight, okay? But you keep it got to be straight. Straight. It got to be straight like me, okay? I can't. A little, a little crooked, you mean? <laughs> just, just, just a little crooked. Up. Yeah. You know, mostly straight. Mostly straight. Okay. That's straight, what we're trying to get with across here. Appreciation, you know. Quasi header. Okay. So obviously we've got to talk about the women at where's, some point. We're where's the talk disclaimer? About... The Dracarium does not have any uh, bigoted views. I wouldn't necessarily go that. So if we're talking about women, because we need to get on that topic eventually. Um, John, what's one of your favorite older actresses? We're into uh, current eventually. Charlize Theron. Uh, she's still freaking hot though. Yeah, and Robotic she, arms. And she's been fantastic in so many movies and in so many different ways. And like, isn't afraid to be like, like she's an incredibly attractive woman, but she's not afraid to be not in an attractive. unattractive role. No, this is true. You know, I mean, uh, Monster. You know, uh, yeah. Mad Max. She was so good in that. She was so, was, was so little that. lines, too. That whole movie had so little lines. She, yeah. I think she did have probably twice as many lines as Max himself, though. Yeah, I only named it that so they, they could name it that so people would know that it was in that universe, but it was not a Mad Max movie. No. But it, it was super fun to watch. It, yeah. it, it was Fury it was Road movie, with yeah. Mad Max. Yeah. 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 It's a great movie, but 
that's the only movie right now that gives me competition for my movie of the year from uh, The Martian. But uh, let's be honest, yeah. no competition. It's The Martian. But let's continue talking about Charlize Theron, amazing actress. Um, probably peak desirability for me was Say Anything. Well, that was a little bit too young. <laughs> <laughs> when I was young and I had a lot of erections, um, there was a movie... Not right now. There was a movie <laughs> that caught my eye and this whole time we've been talking about her I've been trying to remember what it was I not think of it. <laughs> and you're just going to keep stalling it until you when remember I, was a teen, well, I couldn't remember when y'all were talking I'm not going to remember when I'm talking I'm just I'm talking about it I just remember like having erections at it which when you're <laughs> a teenager just in the general direction of it <laughs> just in general when you're a teenager that's a great movie yes yeah and it actually was didn't you movie. yeah well, and wasn't she, that Miss also... Congeniality no. Sandra Bullock She's had a... We're talking uh, about Theron. That's how I started knowing her name, so I could know what to look for. She's had a remarkably long career. I mean... Ooh, I love Desel Devil's Advocate. Let's see. Well, that thing you do was, what, 21 years ago? Give or take? 20, 21 mm -hmm. years ago? That's... With the way Hollywood treats actresses as a disposable commodity... This is not They have a... Uh, She's got a remarkably long, wide-ranging career. This is not. I actually really liked everything. her in Hancock. Fun I thought Google. Hancock was an incredibly interesting concept and was an amazing film. Good job, the first Google. half. That wasn't mm -hmm. everything. And uh, that was the, going back to our previous conversation. That's another one of my favorite actors is Will Smith. He's kind of the. I used to love Will Smith. I used to love him man. so much until I realized how much of a jerk he is off screen. She's like, oh, I don't <laughs> want to know that. I don't want to know that. Tom Hanks is one of the reasons I still love Tom Hanks is he actually is one of the nicest guys in the entire world. Mm -hmm. Yes. And he's been on the Nerdist podcast like five times, and he's awesome every time. Uh, the yeah, and he's just hysterical. Well, well and, part of know, is that from like SNL being on that so many times. Yeah. Yep. Well, it's just like. I don't like, uh, I really appreciate the acting Shailene Woodley does, but I just don't like her off-screen persona. So pretentious. It's, oh, it's so frustrating, because she's, cause she seems like she wants the right things, and she has the right ideas, she but she seems... displays it in such a way, it's like, come on, we're not kindergartners here. <laughs> she's got in good intentions, but are she's you Googling, so... like, Charlize Theron boner movies? No. <laughs> I'm looking at her thing on IMDb, and I think it was on Shailene there. Shailene Woodley forgot the name one of the so cutest much. girls in the world. And she's, she, well, she's kind of the anti-your choice actress. Yeah, anti-my choice. Uh, it's called current, Two Days in the Valley. Current actress, uh, Jennifer sure. Lawrence. Uh, J-Law, your love, your life. If you're watching this... Um, Masturbate vigorously. I would say my address, but my parents would not want me to, so... Uh, <laughs> Are you you can find me at this? Brandon Elisha Ray on Facebook. Oh. Contact, contact me right now. Uh, Jennifer Lawrence, I, I love Jennifer Lawrence. Uh, the, one of the reasons I wanted to start writing and the reason I write so much in the Dracarium is because the first Hunger Games movie. Say what you want about the first Hunger Games movie. There was problems and obviously there was way too much shaky cam and narratively it didn't necessarily work with the directing. But coming out of that movie, just that story, the impact it had on me, and seeing her lead that film. That film would have been not even the same with another lead. Um, absolutely fell in love with Jennifer Lawrence. Silver Linings Playbook. Uh -huh. Shows why she's one of the best actors in the entire world. And she plays crazy. She plays crazy really well. Um, which is American she Hustle. Played, even though yeah. she, they probably should have gone with an older actress in American Hustle. She played crazy to a T. And was amazing at it. Uh -huh. Um... But she looks she's, way, she's way too really good part. in just about every role she's been in. I mean, the only one that I'm a little bit iffy on was Days of Future Past. I think uh, she played a little bit too much on the set and didn't give it mm -hmm. all her all. She was still good, and she gave the physique of Mystique. Well, and she, is, <laughs> God damn it, soundbite. Um, yeah. Well, Hashtag and she was also surrounded by incredible actors. Yeah. You know, and so. In another movie, that performance would have stood out as pretty good. We get it, you vape. <laughs> but it, it wouldn't necessarily... That, that is not going to make any sense on the audio version. Um, <laughs> there's a bit of vaping. No? No. That's uh, all. Yeah. I, I've already told the, the, the Karen so what, what, like, What's one of your favorite like... Jennifer Lawrence performances? Oh, man. 
man. I don't know if any really stand out as much better than any of the others. They're all pretty on level. Like Catching Fire is my favorite. Mm -hmm. um, Mocking Day, she does give an incredible performance, but it is a little bit more one note, just a little weepy. But it is an incredible weepy. Um, you, I believe her sorrow. But uh, Catching Fire, that... <laughs> It's frustrating because, like, the Academy and Golden Globes won't recognize performances like that because they're genre films. It's so good. Just so, so, so good. G genre yeah. films just always get screwed over at the Oscars. Like, Andy Serkis, by all right, should have had at least two best... Uh, I told you. Yeah, oh, yeah. Should have had yeah. at least two best uh, supporting actor noms by now. <sighs> at least two. Yeah. It's frustrating. To say the least. I like Golden Globes, at least with like acting and different stuff. Golden Globes don't always pick the best film. Like mm -hmm. Birdman was definitely the best film last year and should have won. And it did for the Oscars, which mm -hmm. was good. It definitely best editing. Mm. I think I remember you talking something about Sandra Bullock earlier. Yeah, that was the long-term lady. Yeah. I've always liked her as a, the whiny character she always seems to be. <laughs> but she's really good at being the whiny character. Yeah, she's uh, adorable when she does it. Yeah, like, Demolition Man. She played stupid really well. <laughs> like, I'm ignorant to your old person ways. Like, I'm sorry, I know about history. Like, you know. <sighs> he doesn't know how to use the three, three, three seashells. Um, Speed, she is also. Well, I, I know some people <laughs> don't like the whiny character. Did. Yeah. Gravity. Yeah. Uh, I liked Gravity, despite a lot of people that didn't. Um... I don't like some aspects of it. I think it became popular to hate, like, Avatar. It's, yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's a really good movie that doesn't understand or orbital mechanics in the slightest. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's breathtaking like, to look at, and there's some science, yeah, it's science problems. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, it's gorgeous. Neil deGrasse Tyson did an entire tweet series The behind the scenes. Like, Martian might be scientifically good, but visually some of the in-space stuff... Mm, when they're floating around, doesn't look quite as yeah, good. Yeah, there hasn't really been anybody that's 100% nailed zero G. It's really hard to do because mm -hmm. we don't have it here. We have G here. I, just, I thought Gravity did. We have really one good G job. here. Yeah. Current actress? Who did I decide on? Didn't know uh, you like <laughs> Natalie Portman? Uh, Natalie Portman. He's the yep. Natalie Portman. Um, Portman. Not not really been in very many current roles other than Thor. Where she was fantastic. I loved that role. Uh, Black Swan. Yeah, Black Swan. Dirty. <laughs> Probably Darren Aronofsky. Not Aron very dirty. Probably Darren Aronofsky's best film. Mm -hmm. Requiem for a Dream was intense, but I think Black Swan was... Yeah. Um, early works, Mars Attacks. I just I, It's the cheesiest, stupidest movie. But I have I, not seen that. I have the watched that movie probably ten times. Partly because I grew up in Las Vegas and I remember when they blew up that hotel for it. Mm -hmm. The same reason I kind of still appreciate Con Air because I remember when they crashed an airplane into the hotel for the movie. Um, <laughs> Growing up in Vegas, man, there's just stuff to see. She, she's been good for a long time, like from yeah. Leon the Professional. Yeah. I always yeah. just knew it as The Professional because I saw uh, V for Vendetta. <sighs> that movie's so much. Oh, yeah. That movie is so good. And it's so ironic because it's this movie that's all about, like, progressive social change and all that and it's just become this uh mascot for people that don't want anything to do with that well and we have alan moore to thank for that the, yeah probably the greatest graphic novelist of all time and yeah. and then there was the wachowskis who put a different spin on it to make it actually digestible as a visual narrative within a two-hour frame so i remember i know one uh, actress that andrew also likes ellen page well, she's more of an up-and-comer I would say she's not been. She's in a been lot around of... for a little while. Like she has. Juno, was she... that like 2010? Yeah, I love that movie. She she does seem like an actress that is waiting on a big break. Yeah, I don't think that break will ever come. Um, she doesn't really have the. She's no, she's good, but I don't think she's leading material. Well, she's she just she's, she's very, sort of like Samuel L. Jackson. She has a way of being very typecastable. Mm -hmm. You know, dry um, sense of humor. Yeah, like. Speak, going back to Natalie Portman, Kira Knightley, who could totally just be the same roles every time. <laughs> yeah, they could, actually. Yeah, I well, mean, you were talking about that. I, yeah, yeah. The, the Queen's body double in episode one was mm -hmm. Kira Knightley. And I honestly thought when I watched that movie that they had just gone the lazy route and had Natalie Portman play both. <laughs> <laughs> 
yeah, Keira Knightley, um, oh, just continuing to be really, really good mm-hmm. on this track of just growth, um, Theory of Everything. Uh, well, I didn't, not Theory of Everything, uh, Imitation Game. Mm-hmm. Um, while I didn't uh, love Imitation Game, I thought there was plenty of problems with it. Benedict Cumberbatch and Keira Knightley's performances were it's a, just so good. It's great performances, kind of in a less than perfect movie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like the Doctor Who movie, great. Doctor, oh, and terrible I movie. love the Eighth Doctor, but the movie is horrible. Yep. He's yeah. well, one of my favorite the, like, doctors. The first one twenty of the minutes worst. are decent. The first twenty minutes are decent, mm-hmm. and then it just kind of falls apart from there. Yeah, it really does. It really does. And we uh, we should uh, take now a break. talk. Take a break, and then, take we a talk, break, and then yeah. we'll talk about our upcomers when we come back, and we'll talk about our French movies. <laughs> not gonna happen. Not gonna happen. Um, hey everybody, I'm uh, Mary from. Lord of the Rings. <laughs> I just grew three inches while you guys were gone. Nice call. So, obviously, we, we need to talk about our female up-and-comers, but we also, there's our males. <laughs> come on, <laughs> Doc. Uh, we have two so topics cute. left. Two topics, we'll make it. Just come on, keep watching. So, we obviously need to get into our up-and-comers male actors um, to start it with. I picked Adam Driver. Um, if you don't know who Adam Driver is, Star Wars right here. He's going to be... <laughs> right here. Right here. He is going to be Kylo Ren in the upcoming Star Wars Force Awakens. But he's also been in like plenty of indie films that you probably haven't seen. He's been in What If, Francis Ha, he has a strong role in the HBO show Girls, and uh, Inside Lewin Davis. He had a small cameo in that. He was amazing. And every time I see him on screen, I want to see more. He kind of has that quirky persona, um, but genuinely believable. And when he believes in something on screen, you'll see him get like just aggressively angry about it. I and you'll believe, believe angry. Fly. Not many actors can do that. Pull off a genuine, sincere angry coming from like a heartfelt place. I'm and, I'm really glad that they're they made him the Sith then, because man, a Sith with no anger is Anakin Skywalker. Yeah, oh, gosh, don't even bring him up. <laughs> yeah, Adam Driver, really freaking good. Um, one of the guys, our, our guest star today, is the guy that uh, Andrew picked out. I think he's an up and comer. He's great. He's great as the Arrow, and despite the fact that he's definitely not that. I you know you don't see him in that kind of role, and like in his past TV stuff, it's always been kind of the you know goofy, stupid, romantic, whatever. WB stuff. So basically, you're telling me you fall for the Chris Pratt type, a little. And but, I guess, but in Arrow, he's not that at all. You know, there's very little humor to him. There's people around him who's got the humor. He's been doing a lot more this season mm-hmm. um, because they're actually changing the direction with the whole full Green Arrow thing. But him as an actor, him being able to portray this, uh, you know, billionaire turned broken guy you know it's not like bruce wayne where he went off and became a ninja it was he spent five years on an island by himself and well but uh <laughs> he went full castaway okay That's you know it to was say. exact is it changed who he was at the core it wasn't just you know bruce decided to stand up for what's right because his parents died it was he is now a completely different person and you can see that transition of who he used to be to he who he has to pretend he still is in the public eye, but in this dark, you know, introverted per like he plays it really well. I don't think that anyone else could have played it the way that that Amel does. And Amel as an actor, uh, as a person outside of life, doing a lot of charity work, and he generally seems like a good person. Mm-hmm. He was on wrestling once, I guess. <laughs> yeah. um, but he's also Casey in the new Ninja Turtles movie, which we know is gonna suck, but. Maybe he'll do good. Maybe we'll, maybe he can be the Chris Pratt of that movie. Or like the Matt Smith of Terminator, or Genesis. Yes. It's an abomination, but Matt Smith was so good. Right, so he could have the performance of his life in it. Maybe shine some light on his actual acting career, which I don't like the idea of people pulling him into movies because it means he can't do Arrow. You know, wait until he's done. But I do think that he has places that he's going. Yeah. Well, and, and your choice is actually quite a bit like mine in that it's a comic book character on a TV show. Uh, Charlie Cox was absolutely standout incredible in Daredevil. Um, absolutely incredible. Uh, 
Although I really do look at that as more of a movie series than as a TV show because it does feel more like a movie than it does like a TV show. Yeah. It's it's very cinematic. Nature, yeah. Um, but you know, he just he stood out so well as you know he he did a good job pretending to be blind. You know, oh I mean, yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah. Let's not forget that, that part of it. Really, that's hard yeah. to pull off if you can see. You know how hard it is to actually pretend like you're blind. Like uh, back. When to, it to not wasn't, make eye contact in the conversation. Well, just, and it's not yeah. even that. It's like a lot of the times you'll see these movies with blind characters in it, which are actors that are not actually blind. They don't act it well because they give them a, a place to focus on off camera to make it look like they can't see where they're looking. But you can actually watch their eyes follow that thing mm-hmm. when they move yeah. around. It's like you know that, that they've got that dead point focal point. But Charlie Cox is moving around and his eyes remain stationary because he can't see. Mm -hmm. And it also lends to that because the character himself has to pretend that he can't see. Well, and beyond that, he's just got, you know, there's the sensitivity when he's with the nightmares. Um, There's the um, intensity when he has to be intense. Mm -hmm. He's just showed a lot of range in just that one season. I would love to see him in more roles because yeah. he impressed the hell out of me. Yeah, and kind of same with similar with Stephen Amell, he does kind of have that leading man look. Mm-hmm. Um, he's just not like another ugly man off the street. He actually looks like he could be someone, which which is fine. No, no, there's no. there's place for Stephen Amell is the only person who's ever made me question my sexuality. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and also same thing with Charlie Cox, where you could put him into the big buff leading role. Or you could have him as the quiet supporting character. Yeah. You know, uh, I don't think uh, Edel Henson, the, uh, his counterpart in the show. Oh, Foggy, well, is he going to be... A... I don't think Foggy could necessarily be a leading guy. No. no. Sorry, Maybe if it was a computer hacking movie. He should have yeah. been cast in the black, uh, the uh, one with Hemsworth. Uh, oh, God. Yeah. That was such bad casting. That was, a, that was so horrible casting. Oh. Black hat. <sighs> Who's your favorite up and coming actress? Actress, um, one that is similar to Jennifer Lawrence material. Um, she kind of has that friendly next door type of vibe, but also can be really pretty. Is Brie Larson? Uh, not a lot of people know who she is, which is so sad, so sad. Um, but they're starting to, they're starting to. She was in Short Term Twelve, an indie film. She's been in Spectacular Now and Twenty One Jump Street as a love interest. Um, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, but primarily Short Term 12. If you've not caught a glimpse of her, her performance in that is better than a lot of the performance that was nominated for the Oscar that year. She's just so good. Um, her recent film, Room, which I'm dying to see. I look up Fandango every day to see whether <laughs> it's good. Critics are going crazy about it. I've been looking at multiple sites who are saying that this is the performance to beat this year. Her performance in The Room, which is about... Uh, lady who is kidnapped and kept in a room with a small child, um, raped and has to um, develop a relationship with this kid that she has, and she's released at the beginning of the movie, and the rest of the movie is her having to deal with that, and the ramifications of being tortured and stuck in one room for over five years. Hmm. And Brie Larson can do that. I've been campaigning, campaigning, Everyone who I talk about when we talk about Captain Marvel, I say Brie Larson. She needs to be Captain Marvel because she has that sincerity and she just isn't just like a model. She can pull off someone tough, um, sincere, genuine, but also can, you can see that there's an underlying issue and problem with her character. And I absolutely adore Brie Larson and she should grow into something big. She should. If it doesn't, I'd be so sad. Mm-hmm. Good. And this time, when I cut it and everything, and don't leave that part in like you did that other time. I'll just go with I'll I'll just go with mine which, right now, which is actually Cara Delevingne. Okay, I haven't yeah. seen much of her. I know she's in Paper mm-hmm. Towns. Paper right? Towns, um, and she's going to be in the evil Batman movie. What's it called? Uh, Sinis- no, that's going to be Suicide the Suicide Squad. Evil- Suicide Squad, yes. Yeah, Sinis- Margot Robbie. Sorry. Oh, yes, yeah, Margot Robbie. Yeah. Why didn't none of us say it? Margot Robbie. Mm-hmm. Not only is she the most beautiful actress in the world, easily, easily, I think. Megan Fox used to have that place, but until she <laughs> turned a little bit more plastic, I still love Megan Fox, though. Between, well, between her and that, and the Harley Quinn. <laughs> um, 
But Wolf of Wall Street, she did really well. I the whole time I'm like, who the fuck is this girl? Like, she's she, she pl- portrays herself like she's been doing it forever, which she might have for all I know. But I've never seen her before up until that point, and I was really blown away by her performance in that terrible movie. Yeah, she's <laughs> it's not a bad movie. Super- it was very well <laughs> done, but I just yeah, terrible. it was over long. But her performance in that. She's so striking. You, there's so many films where it's just like, another, oh, that's just another pretty lady. She's actually, you get that she's like in, kind of insane, and she holds her own against Leonardo DiCaprio. No easy task because mm-hmm. one of the He's top, top five actors in the world. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Poor Leo. Yeah. Stop making movies when other good actors he's, are making yeah, movies. He's right Stop up. giving yeah. good performances when a performer that's average gives a performance of their lifetime. Yep, yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, he's, yeah. On the list of great actors that don't have best actor wins, he's definitely in the top five. One where he did with Tom Hanks, I think, which Spielberg kind of showing passing of the ball or passing of the honor of like the best actor. In the he's world. going for torch. Torch, was the word. torch, torch is the word. <laughs> passing. Of, that's, that's the cliche you're looking for. Passing of the stick. Passing of the gas. <laughs> passing of the stick. And anyways, Flaming. is um, catch me if you can. Yeah. 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 That that kind of showed. Tom Hanks is great, but look at this new guy. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I'm still like Tom Hanks is great. I don't know what you're doing. Yeah. Is there like any other actors probably that we've talked about that we just love that doesn't really get the attention they deserve? I'm thinking like Tilda Swinton. Yeah. He's amazing in everything. That one black guy everybody loves. <laughs> Don Cheadle. <laughs> no. Oh yeah, Don Cheadle. The one British uh, black guy everyone loves. Idris Elba. That one. Oh, it just was good. He, he, has, he has a super strong presence. I'm not sure if he has. I still uh, haven't watched diversity his new one. of like being able to do his new uh, Netflix one, mm. uh, Beast of No Nation. I haven't watched that yet. Although, I mean, it obviously, it's in my queue. Sam Rockwell. We were talking about him. Sam earlier. Rockwell Moon. is so underrated. Uh, they, no one knows about him, and it's so yeah. frustrating. I watched him in Iron Man Two and in Moon, and I didn't realize they were even the same fucking dude. He, Three miles. Like, who's that? Oh, mm-hmm. Percy. Um, he played Percy really well. Who? Uh, uh, Rocket Raccoon. What's his name? Bradley Cooper. Bradley he Cooper. keeps getting better. He's he keeps in getting everything, better. and you don't see him. He's he just disappears into his character. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, you can you can watch a Bradley Cooper movie and not necessarily realize you've watched a Bradley Cooper movie. Except, I mean, if Jennifer Lawrence is in it, it's a pretty good guess. So we'll yeah. Like, yeah, but the same thing with Jared Leto, like Mr. Nobody, like he plays two characters in the movie, and y- you don't even know that they're the same person, <laughs> and yeah. he's so good. Um, and then obviously Dallas Buyers Club mm-hmm. plays a uh, uh, right word. Transvestite is kind of the right word, but not quite. A transgender. Uh, transgender. Meth head. Transgender. Drug addict, with AIDS. Yeah, that's such a good movie. Such yeah. A good but he's so good. And I, I don't know. I, I think he's going to be really good as the Joker. I know a lot of people else have problems with he it. He does a real good early. job doing crazy. And scary. And what I've seen in the trailer, which admittedly is like a second. It's terrifying. It's, it's terrifying. Because he chills. Yeah. yeah. I think I had to begin with was like a Fight Club. He started to show mm-hmm. like small inklings of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and apparently, he's there's a there's probably the biggest actor we haven't mentioned yet, Edward Norton. Uh, no, uh, Brad Pitt. Brad oh, no. Pitt. Oh yeah, Brad Pitt. Brad sometimes Pitt I another... love him. Sometimes I hate him. He's a, he's like Matt Damon in that he's really easy to hate. Mm-hmm. I have he never just has really liked him, him as an actor. Like Fight Club? Twelve Monkey. Uh, was it Twelve Monkeys? Yeah, I think the, anyone could have played one. Tyler Durden better. I, there, I mean, not anyone, but I think that it was no. a lot of options that could have played no. Tyler Durden better. No. No. No, no. no. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, well, I think that's a good note to sign off. No. <laughs> no. no. See, we don't always agree. Have a nice day. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Actually, that is a good place to sign off. Yeah. yeah. So, right. so this is. I want to say this is going to be regular, but as much as I, I'd love to promise that, yeah, I can't. Um, we're gonna make this as as frequently as we can. Different different topics. Different yeah, maybe aspects. directors next time, yeah. or we've been talking about Star Wars. Just I, let I us would, know if that interests yeah. you guys. Anything in the cinematic universe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Yep. And visual narrative. So really I mean, appreciate being here. Thank you for letting me into your home. Of course. And and of course, I, I mean, I'm saying this to you guys so you can bug them because I don't always have to be here. I don't. Mm -hmm. So if you guys want to continue to do this, if you want to bring in other people, like I said to him, two to three, I think is best for I have one guy who was thinking about doing it. And so, geek. you know, set it up. I could at the very least, you know, you know how to operate We'll just have stuff. you yell from off screen. <laughs> I've only done that once. <laughs> it wasn't my podcast. Anyway. But that's it. Uh, let us know what you think. If you have any opinions that uh, you want to share, maybe that we didn't cover. Um, and just let us know who your favorite actors or actresses. Um, there's tons and tons more, obviously. Right, yeah, right. Tons we didn't cover that yeah. we love. There's a lot of sags. Yeah. Tell, tell us who you think deserve to be on this list in the comments. Yeah. Uh, like the video if you like us. Like the video if you didn't like us, too, because, I mean, it's nice. Yes. Uh, <laughs> or at least let us know that you didn't like us, and yes. then we'll, like, fix things. Yeah. Just don't press the dislike button. Yeah, yeah, none of those stupid down yeah. thumbs. Um, uh, subscribe if you want to see more. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. Have a good day. Bye.